Kaladesi Island State Park was named America's most beautiful beach in 2008. But the island is much more than sun, surf, and red beach umbrellas. It's a gem among nature preserves, an entire barrier island with coastal dune, mangrove, maritime hammock, and pine flatwood habitats, all just teeming with wildlife. This is the real Florida. People first inhabited the Florida Peninsula as early as 14,000 years ago. By the 15th century, there were many different groups of Native Americans living here, marking their territories around springs, rivers, bays, and along the coast. The people in the Tampa Bay area were the Tocobaga, with their center at the present location of Safety Harbor. The Tocobaga were physically larger than the Europeans. They wore ornaments of shell, copper, and blackened pearls, had pierced ears, and were beautifully tattooed in azure, black, and red designs wrapping their chests, arms, and legs. They wore deerskin, furs, and clothing woven from the natural fibers of plants. The Tocobaga venerated their ancestors and built huge burial and ceremonial mounds, which also protected them from the high water of storms. One of these pre-Columbian mounds was found on Caladesi Island. In April of 1528, Spanish conquistador Panfilo de Narvaez sailed past Caladesi Island and made his landfall at nearby Boca Ciega Bay. He immediately terrorized the Tocobaga before leading his army of 300 men north to the Panhandle on foot and on horseback in his quest for gold. Today, the best way to get to the island is by ferry, departing from Honeymoon Island, which was separated from Caladesi by the hurricane of 1921. At the ferry landing, it's clear by the plants, flowers, red mangroves, and water birds that you're in the subtropics. The 20-minute ride on the Caladesi Ferry takes you by Hurricane Pass toward Caladesi on St. Joseph Sound. The ferry then enters the Mangrove Lines Channel to make its landing at the State Park Sheltered Marina. Kayaking the open water of the bay and through the canopy of mangroves is a wonderful way to explore the island. The park has kayaks for rent, a concession stand, and easy access across winding wooden walkways to the beautiful beach. Florida State Parks has created wonderful interpretive displays about what you'll find on the island, including shells, birds, reptiles, mammals, fish, plants, and trees. Among the birds of prey native to Caladesi are the American kestrel, bald eagle, osprey, red-shouldered hawk, and great horned owl. Common fish include gray snapper, snook, sheep's head, gulf flounder, spotted sea trout, and Florida pompano. Over 130 species of birds have been identified on the island. Those of the shore include herons, brown pelicans, terns, willets, and plovers. On the high ground, wildlife is profuse. There are raccoons, marsh rabbits, brown anoles, gopher tortoises, and even eastern diamondback rattlesnakes. So be careful to stay on the marked trail of the two and a half mile path. In 1887, Swiss immigrant Henry Scherer was working on the construction of the Plant Hotel in Tampa. He discovered Caladesi Island in his refurbished sloop, the Anna. The first thing he noticed was a great swarm of birds. There seemed to be every kind, size, and color. It was the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. This looked like paradise, and he turned over in his mind the idea of owning such a piece of nature. A self-taught naturalist, Henry became a homesteader and built a permanent home and a cistern on the island in 1889. 
In 1894, he married Catherine Kate McNally of Dunedin. Kate loved the island, the freedom, being removed from the cares of the world, and the simplicity of living. During a dramatic winter storm in 1895, Henry and Kate's daughter Myrtle was born to the sound of pounding surf on the outer beach and the whine of the wind in the eaves. Named after the wax myrtle that grew on the island, this child would forever love nature above all else. Wildlife would be her friends and companions. Barrier islands like Caladesi are narrow offshore accumulations of sand or sediments that form parallel to the mainland, creating shallow bays or lagoons. How barrier islands are formed is not completely known, but their importance is undeniable. They protect coastlines from the major brunt of storms, and they create rich land and water environments for animals, birds, plants, and fish. Due to wind and wave action, the contours of barrier islands are constantly changing, sometimes quite rapidly. In 1883, the single island north of Clearwater Beach was known as Hog Island. In 1921, a powerful hurricane separated Hog Island into two keys, which became known as North and South Hog Islands. The new opening between them was called Hurricane Pass. During the next 26 years, other storms widened Hurricane Pass. The Dunedin Causeway to Honeymoon Island was completed in 1964, and its effect on tidal flow was to narrow the pass. It also started to fill in the Dunedin Pass, which separated Caladesi Island from Clearwater Beach. This is now the configuration of Honeymoon Island and Caladesi Island, with far different contours than existed 100 years ago. Dunedin Pass was filled in by Hurricane Elena in 1985, and Clearwater Beach is now continuous with Caladesi Island. Myrtle Sharer Betts is remembered for rowing across the bay every day to attend school in Dunedin, and for writing a memoir of Florida pioneer life. She started banding birds for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service around 1920, and was a lifetime member of the Audubon Society. She and her father Henry had always envisioned Caladesi as a nature preserve. That dream was realized when the island was designated a Florida State Park in 1967. In the summer months, a little surf clam called coquina was plentiful. This made a broth much like oysters, but far more delicate and delicious. The stone crabs moved on the grass flats as soon as the first cool spell of fall came. We had an oyster bar. It kept us in oysters all during the cool months. In July, scallops were to be had in abundance. The fall months brought the fat mullet. Fish of some kind could be caught on any day of the year. On calm nights, the voices of the seabirds came to me as they gathered on the barrier sand reef off the beach. There was the sweet whistle of the black belly plover. Sometimes a ward's heron flew over the roof, giving a harsh call that startled me. It seemed every week there was something of interest to do or see. If there had been a winter blow, the beach would be newly covered with colorful shells of all kinds. During the month of February, a sea mustard grew above the tide line. It was unmatched by any of the garden greens. The highland also held a food supply. The cabbage, or sable palms, had a heart. The bud that could be cooked as a vegetable or used as a salad. There were sea grapes and fox grapes to make jelly and jam. As I used these foods, I thought of primitive man who had lived here, and I felt I was following his footsteps. I often wondered if small Indian children had not done just as I was doing, in the same way and over the same ground.
Knowing how sea oats lean upon the wind, their silken rustle as they bend and sway, and having had the sound of breakers dimmed into your ears day after long bright day, how can you turn inland with good grace toward towering mountains or a fertile land? How can you even dare to set your face away from sea oats leaning to the sand? Born on Caladesi in 1895, Myrtle Scherer Betts was the only person born and raised on the island in the 20th century. Her book is a treasure of Florida history, a rich portrait of pioneer life. The author passed away in 1992, leaving an incredible legacy of love for the environment.